Good evening. I wrap Stein, and here we are with your Spider ETF stock market wrap up. And yes, I am back from my trip, brief trip to Florida. It was quite amazing. I got an education in home prices down there that made my jaw drop. I've never seen inflation like that. Never saw so many people with so much money that can afford homes that anywhere else in the in the country maybe they're worth 25% of what they're asking from what I saw. I, I was blown away, to put it mildly. That's a, a, a bold statement. And watching how much construction is going on where they're tearing down an old home to get the land and just putting up another new one. Uh, everything's modern now. There's none of the Spanish style that I saw going up. It's more or less a Miami Vice homes that are uh, taking off, if you remember that show, and uh, the very modern looking homes. People will buy a lot, think nothing of spending a million and a half or more on a lot, a small lot, not on the water, and putting up fence post to fence post to home uh, with their pool and no land. and. That's what you get. I did appreciate that a lot of people are not putting in grass. And even though they have a lot of water in Florida, that was interesting to see talking to a lot of people. Then I got to think. Now, I did what I said. I did not look at the markets for, uh, for two business days. I brought my computer in case we had an emergency at work and my staff needed me to get involved doing things, whatever that might mean. Uh, I never took it out of the uh, carrying case, which was great. But I did get to think a little bit. And I, I came to a conclusion that uh, is interesting. First, if you're trying to relate the stock market, the stock market, the indices specifically, to what's going on in general markets, you get confused. The stock market on its own is not rational. It just wants to do one thing, and that is called rally as a whole. The market looks beyond the S&P 18 times earnings. The market looks beyond the debt ceiling impasse. The market looks beyond the Fed continuing to keep uh, interest rates high. Whether they go higher, that's a debate. It doesn't matter. It's all taken as bullish. But the moment you get away from the stock market, you look at the gold, down, XME, down, TLT, down, BND, down. Currencies against the dollar, down. Everything else there makes sense. And what you don't want to get thrown into is letting one part of a market rule the thinking that you probably have correct in other parts. That's very important. That's what I walked away with. Now, it's 7 o'clock now. It's 6.20 tonight. So that was 40 minutes ago from when I'm recording. I saw House Speaker McCarthy hold his live conference right on the doorstep of the White House. All he said was no to everything. No, he's not going to agree to spend more. No, he's not going to increase taxes. Okay. No, he's not going to waive the three-day rule. It was no, no, no. But they're making progress. I, I guess I'm confused. Are you trying to tell me the Democrats are going to cave in on all this? Because I'm not buying that for one second, all right? Uh, if they are, terrific. Then what uh, President, ex-President Trump said is right. Hold your ground and just go to that wall, whatever that means. I don't know what it is. But if you watched, it was at 6.20 p.m. on Bloomberg at Central Time. I watched it word for word, which is a, uh, one of the reasons I'm a little bit behind right now. And I wanted to see. And I, I'm listening as you started off. It was a good meeting. There's honesty. It's cordial. That's all great. But no, we are not going to agree to cut defense spending. We're not going to agree to increase general spending. We're at 24% of GDP. We're not going higher than that. It should be under 20%. I can go on and on with all the no's. So where are the yeses and what is he giving in on to make a deal? I don't understand it. But the, all the market wanted to hear, because I'm watching him talk, was we're making progress. And I'm looking at the stock indices and they're climbing. Okay. I understood that on my trip. I needed an epiphany moment and I got it. And that's important. Now, ARC. ARC is bottomed out because people want to own everything in tech. And she's in the innovative stock. This is her calling. And this was probably the low right through here, a double bottom if you want. You can go back further, maybe even further lows. But that probably 
was the low of this market in the near term. I don't know what will happen if we get, obviously, a debt ceiling impasse, if we go into a default, nobody knows. But barring that, you can see that the market has a pattern of a lower low, higher high. Because I was gone for two days last week, I figured I'd end up today for you an arc and then I'll look at something else, but I wanted to bring this online. We then look at moving averages. They're starting to move in and converge. That's another overall sign, but this is not a bull market lineup. Bull markets don't start with the shortest term average, the 18 underneath the medium term, the 100, which is underneath the 200. That is not, if you talk to moving average people, typically how they begin. What is interesting is the prior run-ups to the 200 day have all generally failed within two to three days. I don't see that happening right here at this point. So something else is grabbing hold. When you look at the Bollinger Band, this is where I think the market will have all its problems. We haven't hit an upper Bollinger Band other than back here at the beginning of April. And then again, you did it in February. And as you can see, finally, when you hit it, the one peaks, you generally come back down. So I would assume the pros are taking money off the table because you're not embedded. If you understand embedding, it's crucial that you do. First time you hit a number is where pros will come out if you're not embedded. Schwab had a very successful offering, and now they're thinking that other banks can issue debt as well. And as we talked here before I left, I thought we were making our bottoms, and I think you can look back on it now and say Schwab, for the moment, maybe permanently, is out of that. And the long-term buyers in the 40s are probably showing up and saying, I want to own this for the long haul. I'll own it, I'll put it away, and we'll see what we do. It's a little overbought for my uh, cup of tea. On further breaks in the market, I'd be more interested. In the gasoline fund, uh, we are in the driving season, so this is it. Now, will we get prices running to the upside? Well, you don't necessarily just go up in uh, Memorial Day and then back off. Oh, no, no, no. The kids got to get out of school. Families take their vacations. So you've probably seen your low down here. Now the market were moving up. I would expect 6102 to be a resistance point. A lot of support down here. And similar to what I just showed you, you generally don't have bull markets with the lowest, the short term moving average underneath the longer term, the longest 200, which is under the 100. It's lined up wrong. It'll take time and that comes from consolidation eventually. Tesla still looking very good. It was interesting to see Bill Foley of Ford talking about how they're gonna be going after car manufacturers, not just Ford, going after Tesla's share. The game is over for Tesla by itself. I don't think Tesla cares. It can produce cars, more of them, cheaper than them and keep them at bay for the time being. I was pleased to see as I was on my vacation, spy photos of what the new face looks are going to be in Tesla. Yes, they are trying to update the car a bit and give it some uh, remakes, which I have been saying it needs. In XLF, you have a pattern of a lower low, higher high, overbought. I see resistance 33.19. I don't see a trend developing there. XLI still void of a trend. Lower low, higher high. Caught in the Bollinger Bands more or less is what I see in the market in the industrial sector. Now we're going to get some S&P flash PMIs tomorrow. I believe in uh, the service industry as well. So keep your eye on that manufacturing and I think service tomorrow comes out. In socks, what can you say other than everybody wants to own the chips? That is where the AI is. It'll get overvalued quickly and then it's got to come back down. But you're trying to develop your embedded reading. You're having an outside day to the upside. You ran the Bollinger Band. You came back to it. Strength. That's all it is. Still strength is being seen in this market. And in the home builders, well, I told you what I saw. My jaw dropped. I admit that. I, I had not seen, I, nor did I expect anything like what I saw. There isn't a block in the area that we were at in Boca uh, where if you go in off the, off the, by the way, if you're on the water, there's home after home going up where I was at. And they're expensive. I mean, really expensive. And then you go a block back where you're not on the water. You have to have pools. Everybody has a pool anyways, but you're not on the water. I didn't see one block where there isn't 
construction going on, not one. These are older areas. These are not new areas. They just come in, they take them down. So it was an education for me to see what's going on there. And this has nothing to do with the hurricane season. This is new building. Lower low, higher high, lost embedded reading. You got up where you should go in the energy. That's the resistance point. I look for the gold to be fighting a battle here, but it's still got the heavyweight part of fighting. When the debt ceiling issue ends, you still have a, until June 14th to know what the Fed is going to do. And while we heard and we did hear Fed Chair Powell over the, uh, when I was gone Thursday and Friday, he certainly wobbled. Uh, he might want to see the impact, the lag effect. But as I said, if you get the jobs data that comes out early June and the CPI data that comes out then to be strong, you can't pause. That's what Bullard was saying today. And every day so far, uh, starting last week right on through today, a lot of Fed members talking. And uh, it's very few that are saying that they're not in favor at some point of pausing. They don't know if now is the time to do it. They want to see the data. That's the consensus of what I have read. When you look at silver still falling, could be going back to the challenge of the 100-day average. Bearish until you lose the, uh, the embedded reading. You need that red line to close over 21 in order to not be bearish. Copper, big problem still going in China. Their economy is not doing well. They claim, I read an article tonight, that very quietly, the peak of their COVID, some 65 million people should be in the month of June. And that's when they expect it to go to the other side. You wouldn't know that they're still having COVID issues. I found an article today out of nowhere that said that. Show me all the articles you've read about COVID in China. You haven't. It's how the press works. It's very strange. But it is one of the reasons why you're having the slowdown. The economy has not rebound. We are not seeing foreign demand. I cracked up laughing when I saw that Biden said there's going to be a thaw between the relations of China and uh, the United States as China takes Micron and says, your chips are barred from here. And, you know, people say, well, it's not one of the biggest companies. It's 11% of their sales of Micron. That takes place. But the two will get together. Mr. President, you've probably got to take some of the sanctions off some of the Chinese government people as a goodwill mes uh, message. And with that, what can happen is you can begin the thought of talking. Not talking. You know it. It's bad. I know it's bad. But the whole G7 message was what? How do we go after China? Blah, blah, blah. China had its own meetings to go after us. This thing is still not very healthy any way you look at it. Uh, BND, still in a downtrend. I don't see it coming out until we know what's going on with the debt ceiling. That's what's weighing on this market. People don't want to own that in front of that. In the dollar, you want to own the strongest of a bad mess of things that can happen if we go into default and the people are buying the dollar. You're very close to getting your embedded reading. You need three days over 80 to get it. You had it today. You had it yesterday. You had it the day before. So you've got it. You even barely got it on Wednesday. So the first good break in this market where you don't take out a prior day size, probably where the market's going to get bought. In the euro, you got the bear signal. It is trying to hold the first challenge of the 100-day average that it hasn't hit uh, going way back here in March was when it was attacked the last time. Here it was actually hit. That's where the pros are taking some money off the table, but not all of it. You keep that embedded reading. <coughs> Excuse me. They'll look for the market to still fall. So the good news is I have an understanding, and that's why you go away. You like to think and you say to yourself, do I understand why this was doing it? And you know what got me confused? I kept looking at the stock market saying, why does it keep going higher? I now don't care why it keeps going higher. It has no bearing on my thinking. I'm able to separate the stock indices now from the stocks and from what I see in the other parts of the market. Going away sometimes does that. And another thing, you know, we get a lot of people, they use TradingView, our charting software. They want to get all my indicators. We created a suite of indicators that takes up two slots. One of the slots on the chart uses the uh, slow stochastics. The others, this whole suite of the indicators, it comes with everything I do. It's all my formulas in there. So if you're looking to get something that'll keep up with exactly what I do, 
that's it. And we figured a way for it to only take up two slots means you got three left. You probably never even use more than one for most of you. All right, maybe if you use MACD or slow stochastics, you have another one. You still have plenty left here. How do you get it? Go to our website under the word software. You sign up on our site, then we activate it there. You can also click up here at any time on the very top. You'll see an icon. Give it a click. It'll take you where you have to be. I'm I Rapstein. We'll finish up with uh, ARC today or tomorrow. I'll make up my mind tomorrow, but I didn't feel it was right to just bring it on for a few days, leave for two, and then not finish up with it. I did it over the weekend on the weekly charts, and I wanted to get back to it daily. I'm I Rapstein. Good to be back. Take care.